My name's Eddie Winners. You're listening to the Rock and Roll Coup d'etat. It gives me great honor and pleasure to bring on our next guest all the way from Baltimore, Maryland, Mr. Ronnie Dove. Ronnie, are you there? Yes, I am, Eddie. How you doing? I'm doing great. Welcome to the program. Wow. How'd you like that last note? I got... <laughs> it was incredible. That last note... <laughs> Absol- My spine tingled. And exactly. It is. Uh, uh, what, what a giant sound yeah. that recording has. Uh, by the way, uh, it's just fantastic to hear your voice here on the program. You got a. You, you, you've you've got a great album out right now. Uh, oh, the, yeah. the complete original chart hits, 1964 to 1969. It looks. And, uh, it looks gorgeous. Yeah, they they did that. Uh, uh, Real Gone uh, uh, Music uh, put that out, out of, and they're out of California too, out of Hollywood. Is that right? Yeah, they they uh, they've got a bunch of people that uh, this one though is going all over the world and it's selling really really good, and I'm so so happy. It, it's I you know it, it is I I read online you know that the there had not been a retrospective of your career uh, done so neatly, and of course these recordings. Uh, some of them stereo uh, recordings. Yeah, there's, there's 16 of them that are stereo. See, we, uh, the ones, the masters that I had were all mono. Yes. And uh, uh, we found uh, uh, the masters for this one in England because they had me on stateside records in England, Germany, France, and Denmark, and Sweden, and all those places. I didn't even know I was selling records in those countries. Wow. I had no idea. The record company they never told me. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, but I never received a, a royalty check anyway because I, every time I'd build up some money, they would take me to Nashville and we'd record. So that's why I've got 217 songs recorded. That is, you know, <laughs> I was going to say a staggering amount of of material that you've recorded uh, in, in in that period of time. And, uh, well, you know, and I've got to say, before we, I get too deep into the, the CD, uh, happy birthday, by the way. Thank uh, you. you. Thank just, you very much. You, it's September we, we 7th. Had big, we, we had a big party Sunday, and it was great. Oh, that is that is fantastic. Congratulations. I, yes. I mean, you've been... You, I, I, it's just it, 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 I, I'm so thrilled to, uh, to 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 know that you, uh, you had a great birthday and also have been performing recently and you've got shows coming up and you, you, you're still very much active and uh, yeah it's, I'm still doing them. In fact, I just uh, signed a contract for April for a show in Long Island, New York, with a, a doo wop show with some of the old friends of mine. Uh, Jimmy Clanton's going to be there, and uh, Johnny Tillerson, just, the Coasters, and, wow. not the Coasters, the Drifters. Uh, so I mean, we we did it a couple of years ago, and we're doing it again this coming April. That is I, absolutely, I mean, absolutely just thrilling. I mean, I, and I've got you, you've got shows coming up on the twenty seventh uh, at Old Salties, a couple shows in the uh, Baltimore, Virginia area. And, and we, have, we have a show up, I think, up near Pennsylvania, uh, the 15th of November. And then I'm, I'm doing a show on the 11th in, in Herndon High, in Herndon, Virginia. That's where I was went to high school. That's, in fact, it's our homecoming. And I, every year I go and do a big show there for our homecoming. That is, yeah, oh, you nice. know, you, you started and, and you grew up in, uh, in, in Herndon. Uh, yeah, that's where I was raised. I was raised on a farm. I was one of them farm boys that... Milk the cows and haul the manure. That's, that's, <laughs> and what, what, how did you, you know, if we go back a little bit, when you you were in, in Herndon, at what point did you, were you, you were listening to music and, and singing? And, oh, you know, yeah, did, I, I, I was doing uh, Johnny Ray and uh, all, all those kind of guys back in, in my early days. Of course, uh, that was Mama's favorite singer. Oh, yes. And, and we put an album out called Cry. That had a whole bunch of uh, songs that Johnny did, and uh, of course I, I had a little rock and ro- I had a little rock band in in uh, and while I was in high school. In fact, the last two years in '53 and '54, and we used to play down at the Herndon Theater every Saturday. 
And, and what what, what type, type of material were you doing at that time in high school? Oh, we, we were doing just about it. We, we were doing a lot of country, Eddie Arnold, and then we were doing Johnny Ray, and we were doing anybody that had a record. And then, when, then uh, Shake, Rattle, and Roll came out. We, that was our big number. And then Elvis came out, but I, I, he didn't come out till uh, actually 54, and that's, that's the year that uh, I heard him for the first time. Yeah, well, you know, how, how much did... Uh, I mean, obviously, Elvis affected everybody. and uh, yeah, Elvis, in fact, my first job, in fact, a gentleman just left here that had a picture he, he found on the Internet of the club that I started in in 1955 uh, at Elmer's on Pratt and Light Street, which right now is Inner Harbor. But back then it was like where all the ships came in and unloaded their their goodies, and uh, it, was, it was kind of a rough part of town. Right. And but you, that, that's where we started, and he brought me pictures of it today, so it was kind of neat. So you got, you got to see, basically, the, those, the old, the insides of this club that you probably haven't seen in, or, you know, in years. Oh, yeah. That's, that's... We had, we had it, it, was, it was a good trip. I mean, I, it, it, we had some exciting times, and we had some bad times, but we had some, most of them were exciting. And you, 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 you were in the, you did the, you had a stint in the Coast Guard, and that's kind of yeah, what brought that, you into Baltimore. Is that right? That, yeah, that's why I got stationed here. Uh, I was on a buoy tender. Well, if you don't know what a buoy tender is, that's a, that's the little ship that goes out and picks up the buoys and puts new batteries in so they keep those lights going. Right. So you were, and and you would just come in, into the city when you were not working. Oh yeah, well, well, we were we were we were stationed at the foot of Clinton Street. It wasn't a, it wasn't where you went into a into a, a Coast Guard yard or anything. It was just at the end of Clinton Street, and we had no gates to go through. We didn't have to dress up. And of course, it was a dirty job, and I was the machinist mate, so I'm the one that kept the steam engine going. Wow. Of course, of course, I'm paying for it now because I uh, had uh, asbestos, and I changed about thirty thousand pipes. Jeez. It was all steam. Wow. The ship was built in 1914. Wow. Yeah, so that wasn't even a consideration back then. Of course, yes. Yeah. Mm, man. But uh, you've recovered uh, uh, from that well? or? Oh, no, no, no. I still have it. But I, 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 yeah. they found the shot that I'm, I'm taking. It, 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 it's amazing. Uh, in fact, uh, when they found it, I had it. They told me if I'd have smoked cigarettes, I'd have been dead ten years ago. Oh wow! But I found a shot uh, that that they give me. It's two thousand a month, but it it keeps my lungs clear and I can sing. So I mean, the, that's, you know, that's I w I wanted to ask you because I I saw uh, there's a, a great uh, video online of a, a news report I think from South Carolina that they did on you, uh, and they mentioned that you were going to perform your last show. Uh, last year and in yeah. this clip and I I to be honest I was like that I was very saddened and then I went back on your website and saw that you had shows and I was very again returned happiness well I, and that's got that's a pretty good story because they uh, they last and uh, I think it was June of uh, 2013 I got a letter my, my wife has Blue Cross Blue Shield and I got a letter from uh, the Blue Cross Blue Shield said, well, you're 77 years old and we have to take you off because you have to go on Obamacare. Hmm. And, I, I, and I did some checking on Obamacare. And, and at that time, I was taking the shot, $2,000 a month. Obamacare didn't cover anything. So I thought I was going to lose my shot. And it, was, it turned out so bad, the governor of this, this state, Maryland, uh, canceled every everybody could be because they were going to put the state workers on Obamacare, but it was such a mess uh, that they didn't do it. And uh, he gets out of office this year, so hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll be able to keep our Blue Cross Blue Shield. Yeah, so continue. They, they yeah, that's yeah. I mean, that's that's uh, uh, incredible. I mean, you know, the the thing that is uh, that I marvel at is. Um, you know the the your, your uh, you 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 have a, such a distinct uh, voice and 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 you've kept it such in shape. Uh, th did you ever, you know, back in the the early days when you were recording records, uh, did you have any coaching as far as your your vocal? Or was it just a natural 
ability well, that you had. Actually, when I was like five years old, I had asthma really bad. And uh, my grandmother played every instrument there was to play, organ, piano, guitar, uh, everything you could play, she played. And she would sing to me, and she taught me to sing when I was like five years old. And she could play. In fact, she was uh, the organist for the church for many, many years. So I'm at the church with her and uh, learned to sing. I used to sing in all the all the little shows they had in our church. When did when did your voice? So then, when I got in high school, then or in grade school, I didn't sing much except with grandmama. But then high school, uh, I, I sang in the glee club, and I took four years of music in high school. So you 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 basically you you got that training, that initial training. It, oh yeah, and I had a great great high school teacher, Miss Mrs. Truxis. I mean. And evidently, she saw something in me that, and this is back in like 52, 53, 54, that, uh, and, and she told me, she said, you're a pretty good singer. <laughs> you could make a, a living to it, but I, I, I never dreamed that I would, you know, at that time. I, I just loved music, and I wanted to learn more how to, how to read music and how to write music and how to sing. So I was I was the leader in the glee club for three years. So whenever this whenever you did a song that needed a single singer with a glee club behind you, then I would sing it. That's and then and then from there, that's when you you started with your own well, no, group. Then 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 I, I was I wanted to be a policeman. Is that right? Your your father was a policeman, was, was right? My dad was a policeman in Fairfax County, which was in Virginia, and. Uh, I wanted to be a policeman. I, I mean, I, when I got out of the service, I, I went right straight to uh, Virginia and took my all my tests I needed to take. And, of course, he was there with me. And then we went to take the physical. Now, listen to this. It's kind of neat. And uh, at, I got past the physical and set, told me they, they wanted to measure me. I was only 5'7". You had to be 5'8 to be a policeman. Is that right? Wow. So that one inch changed my whole life, and, and the Lord works in kind of different ways, and I guess he didn't want me to be a policeman. No. And <laughs> so then, because that, that, I was singing all through one, in the Coast Guard. I was working every night at Elmer's down on Pratt and Light Street, and I was doing Elvis and everybody else that had hit songs. In fact, they would uh, the, they had an advertisement in a, called Night Life Little Magazine, and they'd have my picture on Every couple of months, uh, little Elvis at uh, Elmer's. So I was doing Elvis in, in '54 and '55. Wow! Before anybody else did. <laughs> That's right. That is right. That is right. So yeah. Elvis was Elvis was was my mainstay as far as once I. Uh, in fact, the song that you just played, "Right or Wrong." Oh yes, we well we uh, we opened up with "Say You" and we and then we went into "Right or Wrong" right after that. Well, see, right or wrong, and that's what that's. I met him in 1964, because uh, I did my first recordings at RCA in Nashville, and uh, the Jordan Ayers and the Nita Kerr singers were our, were our backup singers. Right. And so uh, Elvis was recording in Studio A, and I was in Studio B, and Jordan Ayers were a little bit late getting in, so we didn't get to start our session for a little bit while. A little bit late, so we had just finished recording right or wrong, and I looked up and there he was in the control room. Wow! And so I just, I couldn't wait to walk in and meet him, and and he hugged me and said, "Oh, Ronnie, I just I love your voice." And I'm thinking, uh, he said that song he did, "Say You," and that was our first hit. Wow! He said that note that you hit on "Say You," he said you need to put it on this song, right or wrong. So I said to Bill Justice, can I go back in and do it one more time? Because in those days, you sang it all the way through. It wasn't you couldn't punch in or anything like that. Right. If somebody made a mistake, you had to sing it again. So I went back in and did it one more time, put the high note on it, and Elvis said, no, that's going to be a big hit for you, Ronnie. That is wow. incredible. Yeah. I mean, you know, and it's funny, we brought you in to that note, and uh, it is, it, it, you know, it, it's such a uh, distinct sound. I mean, what, you know... I, I, can, I can only imagine as, you know, you you were so influenced early on by Elvis uh, to oh, yeah. see him in the studio when you looked up. You, it must have been, uh, I mean, 
just oh, one of those amazing. defining I, moments. It was, it was the best thing that ever happened to me. Yeah. It's just, it seems like that and would have been a nice, incredible. What a wonderful, nice man he was. I mean, I only had one record, Say You, and Elvis knew every word to it. Hmm. And he said, I would sing that song, but I can't hit that note. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's great. And how, you know, what brought you to uh, Nashville to become, uh, to, to start recording these records? What well, was the opportunity? I, I, th what happened was uh, Jimmy Velvet. Do you remember Jimmy Velvet? Jimmy Velvet. I, I, the, yeah, he I, had a song called We Belong Together. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Well, he was on ABC Dot Records. And I was working, this is after I got out of the service, I was working at a club up on Child Street called The Spa. And, uh, of course, all the DJs would come there from, like, uh, Johnny Dark and all the radio station guys would come in every night because we would... It, we had Ronnie Dove and the Bell Tones, and we, we packed the place seven days a week. So Johnny Dark, who is still alive and still doing the radio, uh, he said he brought Jimmy Velvet in. And so I got Jimmy up to sing that song. And after he finished singing, I said, wait a minute, you know, my voice is kind of powerful. And he was really kind of laid back, and I said, wow, he's got a hit record with that. Maybe maybe I can go to Nash go. I I asked him. I said, "Where'd you record this?" And he gave me uh, Nashville, Tennessee, at RCA, and Bill Jester's name. We uh, had the manager, uh, the owner of the club, call him, and we set up a date to go to Nashville and met Bill Jester and and Link Ray. I don't know. You remember Link? Ray oh yes. Not? Oh yes. Well, yeah. Link Ray was uh, a dear friend of mine. He 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 was just just played the guitar. You know? Right. Of course. And his brother, Ray Vernon, was a good friend, and, and Ray went as my producer. So uh, we flew to Nashville, and, and Link Ray went with me. In fact, Link Ray is, is uh, on uh, on both of those songs. Is that right? Guitar. Yeah. Wow. He, that, he, was a, he was a dear friend. That is that is absolutely incredible. I, it, it, and you recorded those, that that was your the, 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 your first time in a, in a professional studio as well, I assume. Oh, no, no. I'd been in the studios. I was on Decca Records. Oh, right before with, that, yes. Yeah, back in the, in the early 60s, uh, but with the bell tones, you know, and and, and it was a, they were local hits, you know, but nothing, you know, like with violins and all that. Right, with but, the big productions. And yes, and after that, you know, we, we, in fact, uh, Link Ray wrote the first song that they put out in 63 called Sweet and Sugar. Right. Uh, or you, you don't have that on that record because it wasn't a hit. It it's sold five copies and I bought four of them. <laughs> 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 you might be a rich man with the, if you sell them now, you know. <laughs> In a oh, yeah, now they're market, worth yeah. a lot of money. In fact, the the first song that I recorded with the Bell Tones was uh, that I wrote for Elvis in '55 called uh, "Lover Boy." Yes. And uh, of course, I didn't I didn't know what a publishing company was. I didn't know. You have to send it to Hill and Rain. So I sent it to Sun Records. I sent a copy of it. Of course, I never heard back from him. So in 59, when I started the Bell Tones, we went in and recorded uh, Lover Boy on Dove Records. And uh, we just we printed up 500. We got rid of those real quick. We sold it for a dollar a piece. And now if you look in the... Well, the last time I looked in Goldmine Record Books, it was worth $4,000. That's incredible. Wow. Hey, 500 copies, too. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Kind of neat. Yeah, that's. I mean, that is. It really is. And it. So you. You. you how did the the connection? Uh, the the. It's it's in the book uh, for the CD. But uh, retell the the tale of uh, meeting Bobby Bobby Darren and him uh, mm -hmm. getting you to come out to L.A. to record records. Well, after we we had. Uh, well, say you. By the way, uh, he owned the publishing on that. That was T.M. Music. That was his publishing company. And of course, I, I didn't know. I didn't. I didn't know that at the beginning. I didn't know that was his publishing country. Because I met the guy that wrote it, Johnny Hicks, and I met him in New York. Uh, he was a uh, orderly in a in a hospital there, really neat guy. And he wrote. He had written "Say You" and Jamie Cole had put it out in 1960, 60 something, but it was a cha cha. And it, that "Say You" was a cha cha by Jamie Cole. 
Well, so, of course, it wasn't a big hit for him. I think it was on ABC Records or something like that. But I liked the words, and I slowed it down and, and made a, a, a ballad out of it. And uh, I just loved the song, and and I, and I hit that high note on it every, every, from way back in the early days. So then when I got to uh, go to Nashville, I did one of uh, Link Ray's songs and one of my songs that I wrote, and... Uh, Actually, two of Ray's, and that was it. So they put uh, Sweeter and Sugar out in, in late 63, and nothing happened. Then they released Say You, and it, it started it started right here in Baltimore first, and then it like went to Washington, D.C., and then it went to Pittsburgh, and then it was like... It started it was, to spread just throughout yeah, the it, area. And then it started spreading, you know, so... That, that that was our first one, and then, so we had to come up with right or wrong. Instead of being a rocking singer, because that's what I was doing, I was doing all the rock and roll stuff, doing splits and jumping off stage and all that <laughs> stuff. Sounds exciting. And all of a sudden, now I'm a ballad singer. Oh, <laughs> right. So, so uh, right or wrong, I come up and we had Hello Pretty Girl, which was a cha cha, and I got a call. I, I think I was in, I think I was in New York somewhere working, and. Uh, he called me through through the record company. He called the record company first, and he said, "I've got a song I want Ronnie to hear." And I said, "Okay, I'm gonna." He called me and uh, told me that I had a ticket at the airport, at Friendship Airport, and he had it all paid for. And he says, "Come on out here." But I talked to him on the phone when he first called. He said, "This is Bobby Darren." I said, "Oh yeah, sure." Right. <laughs> I, I didn't believe it. And then he said, no, Ronnie, I got your next hit. And then I paid attention. He says, oh, by the way, Say You was my, one of my songs in my publishing company. And then I got all excited. So we talked about an hour on the phone. And he was, you know, we're talking, how tall are you? Uh, what, what size shirt and what size stuff do you wear? And I'm thinking... Wow, well, I'm going to fly out there and listen to her song, and he's going to buy me a suit. Yeah, wow, that's great. Your wardrobe, yeah. And, and, and shoes, I guess. I'm, uh, I'm, that's what I'm thinking. So he picks me up at the airport, Yeah. and we're, we're getting the car, and he says, okay, there's something in the back seat for you. And it was a package. It was a pair of tennis shoes, some, tennis, uh, some socks, a T-shirt, and a pair of shorts. <laughs> and I'm thinking, wow, where are we going? He said, we're going to the ball field. So we went and played baseball with uh, Sandy Koufax, and Drysdale, and a whole bunch of movies. Wow. That is amazing. Until it got dark. Wow. That's cool. So that was kind of neat. So yeah, and then you were... we went to dinner about 11 o'clock uh, that night. I think we finished eating dinner at 11. So then he took us over, over to his office, and he played uh, One Kiss for Old Time's Sake. Oh, that's a, and it's a, what, a, what a song. And it... That that and, uh, was that his version or a, a demo that you had no, heard? No, no, no. He had uh, uh, he had a, two guys, Arthur Resnick and Kenny Young, were the writers. Right. And that, and Kenny could sound just like me, so the demo that he had was uh, close to, close to me. So it was kind of neat. Oh wow! And it was uh, written so for he, you. He, he hired those two to write songs. So. After that was moving up the charts, he called me again and says, get back out of here. I got your next hit. Wow. So I get I get on the plane. I fly back. He picks me up. We go play baseball, and we go eat, and then we go listen to A Little Bit of Heaven. Did, did that he, was his, too. Did he buy you a new outfit the second time? <laughs> no, no, no. He, 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 uh, he, he always provided the... He said, don't, don't forget... To, don't forget your tennis shoes and stuff, so I brought them with me. Oh, that's good. But, but, but he, he was kind of superstitious. So then he calls me after a uh, little bit of heaven, and he, when Lycan turns 11, so wow. that was a big part of my life. That is incredible. I mean, it's it's just amazing to think that, uh, you know, there you were several years early, of, you know, doing these clubs, and then you're being flown out to uh, Hollywood and, and, and uh, getting to record these tracks. Now, did you record uh, those songs in L.A.? Uh, oh, no, no, no. Or were you back in Nashville? Oh yeah, we, we that was uh, that was part of it. Uh, Bill Justice was doing most of them, and then he got sick, and uh, um, uh, we we still recorded at RCA for the for, for the like first six hits we had. Wow. And Ray Stevens, Ray Stevens, uh, Bill Justice got him. He was just a young kid, and he said, "Here's a genius." Uh, 
he's going to do the charts for you on uh, one kiss for all time's sake. Is that right? He wrote the charts, and then he wrote it, and then he did a little bit of heaven when Lichen turns eleven. So Ray became a dear friend too. Wow, and that this was before before he put records out. Yeah, that's. I mean, he must have been pretty young oh, he, back in a, those he days. He was a junior. Yes. Wow, that is incredible. And and so the you know the you 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 had a string of of I mean you had this real momentum and you started to get on you were on American Bandstand uh, Dick Clark it's a great uh, video clip of that uh, performing there you tell us a little bit about you know the ride you you ended up going on Ed Sullivan uh, later on and a few a few years later well that was 1966 actually we 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 did the Ed Sullivan show and I, that's something I really wanted to do and of course uh, uh, we had Cry was just coming out at that time so uh, we uh, we got it set up uh, Ed Sullivan wanted me to be on the show so. We were going to do uh, Cry and going to do Right or Wrong. So I, I um, at that, that point in my life, I was making some pretty good money. And uh, I said, well, I, we're going to do the Because Nelson Riddle was the band for the Ed Sullivan right. Show. And they didn't have strings or voices. So I, I got uh, Nita Kerr singers and the Jordan Airs and the string sessions, the string players, to fly to New York to be on the Ed Sullivan show. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So that was pretty neat. I paid for that out of my pocket. But now, what the bad story was, was Connie Francis was on the same show. Hmm. I, n- I never even got to talk to Connie Francis. She sent over her manager. And this is, our, we had our first uh, scheduled rehearsal at 5 a.m. I got, I, I got in Nashville at 4 and I had to be at the Ed Sullivan Theater at 5 because I'd been doing a telethon in Nashville for three days. I'd been up for three days. I thought I'd get wow. some sleep, but I didn't. So we went straight. Our first one was 5 o'clock so, in the morning, so we did uh, Right or Wrong first, and then we did Cry, which was two songs. And the string people were there, and the voices, everybody was there. And so then we come back at uh, 1 o'clock, around one o'clock for a dress rehearsal and ed sullivan's son-in-law came over to me and says uh ronnie we're, we're gonna have to cut uh so many bars out of right or wrong and, and right or wrong was only a minute 45 seconds long right oh, man. Jeez. And, yeah. and we're gonna have to cut so many minutes out of cry uh-huh. but in the meantime connie francis uh manager says uh she's got charts for strings and voices can we uh split the cost i think i paid ten thousand to fly them out there and back and and they said we'll we'll, we'll split it with we what is it and i said ten thousand and they said well we'll give you five thousand we can use your charts so me and you know i, I love connie francis and right. she was one of my favorite singers but then uh come to find out she was only doing three songs and she decided she wanted to do four that day oh so i had to i lost doing right or wrong from and I yeah. never received the five thousand. Uh-huh. Oh, jeez, that's that's a, ah, that's yeah. that's not a uh, uh, not the happy ending on that story. That's, no, it wasn't. It was uh, she cost me because uh, I wanted to do right or wrong because that was our the biggest big, prior to that. Yes, and, you know, and, and uh, because I, I, you know, I trusted him, and this was your first appearance a, on the Ed Sullivan Show, too. That right? was upset. That upset me so. Yes. I, I, and I never was, listened to Connie Francis again. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can imagine. I'd be, I'd be fuming. I mean, uh, sure. well, I, I, I was really upset because Cry was moving up the charts. And this is what happened, of course. In 66 is when we did it. But right as we're getting ready to go on and, and, and do the show, they preempted the show. Coach Sagan from Russia had flown in. So and it was a Sunday night, so they preempted the show. The show wasn't shown until 1968. Is that right? Wow! So that was it. Would have gone to number one. And it, it, totally, because that would have been such a yeah, uh, huge. Oh yeah, 66 would have gone to one. So that's another 
you know, you, you, all these little ups and downs, and that was one of the worst because that that song would have been number one. Yeah, I mean, and it, it's it's amazing because we've we've had a lot of uh, different music guests who uh, you know, and they on the program in the past, and they've you know, it, it, it is a lot of that kind of timing, uh, you know, the ups and downs that really kind of. Uh, you know, when you look back on your career, you 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 look at these these kinds of uh, you know these momentum things, such as the Bobby Darren, and then of course the Ed Sullivan uh, Connie Francis situation. It's 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 a very very interesting. And I I know that you you had a show back in in 1966 uh, in Baltimore that uh, I believe what they did you you taped. Eleven or twelve episodes for uh, the, the 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 Ronnie Dove show. Can, oh yeah, we can did, you tell we us did about that? Fifteen shows, and uh, we lost. Uh, I think we have two of them. I sent you a copy of that, right? I I've not seen. I've only seen a, a, a small clip of just one. I I've not seen a copy yeah, of that, that yet. Was but that was the one. That was the Ronnie Dove show because that was in '66. <laughs> Uh, the year we did the Ed Sullivan show, and I had my own TV show, which was uh, it was circulated with uh, in Virginia and in D.C. Wow! Um, because that's where I was born and raised in that area. And uh, what we would do was we had 13 shows, and then we each week I would have my manager would take over the one, first show, and then we. They would, for the next week, they would have a second show. We had 13 shows. We had Ray Peterson, Tillerson, Billy Joe Royal, so many friends of mine, there, and, and the Coasters, and the Drifters. Wow. And Bobby Martin. Now, the ones you have, you have the Coasters, I mean, uh, the Drifters, and Bobby Martin. But in the meantime, uh, because I was gone all the time, I was married, and my wife said, uh, you got to quit singing. And, uh, <laughs> I said, no, so yeah, we split up, and then I had to move in with a friend, and I took all those boxes with me, right. all those all those masters, and he, he ended up putting up in his attic, and I didn't, I thought they were all lost, but a guy by the name of Tom Deal came over, and evidently, through all those years, I kept those two masters. Wow. And he found them in a bunch of junk, and, and then he fixed them up, cleaned them up, and they looked pretty good. That is incredible. That you, you, and you you still have you know those in your possession too. Yeah, but the other ones the other ones were all ruined because five years ago the guy the the, the friend of, that I lived in his house somebody else bought it because he passed on and they bought the house and they were up in the attic and all those masters up in the attic and they brought them over to me and i was all excited yeah. this is about five years ago mm -hmm. and that's why i thought they were all lost i didn't even know i had the two that i had wow and i opened it up and it just the tapes just fell apart because we're up in a hot attic oh yes oh, yeah, yeah, for yeah. years i imagine yes yeah so that that, that was like 30 35 40 years later Wow, <laughs> Jeff. I, I mean, and that's well. That's the great thing about the uh, this this new release there that they luckily they found these these uh, new recordings uh, the, the the stereo versions oh, yeah. of some of those uh, tracks. Um, you know, some of the biggest ones, and and it's you know I I, I just I, I can I can only imagine you know a lot of this stuff uh, the memorabilia and the photographs the post is. Um, oh yeah! All of that. It, it, did you have a lot of that when you uh, 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 some of this from your your own collection? Oh yeah, I got a, I got a really nice collection. Uh, collection. I mean, my mom kept a copy of everything I did. I mean, oh. she book after book. I've got them all stashed in. The, and of course, I gave a lot to uh, Tom Deal. He's a, he's a collector and he's a good friend. Without him, you know, he he found a lot of stuff. In fact, he's got two copies of Lover Boy. Oh, is that right? <laughs> wow. <laughs> but Tom Deal was a uh, Tom Deal helped me put the deal together with this company in California. Oh, that's that that, that is yeah, fa fantastic. Because I mean, it's such a, I you know, I, I, as as from what I know, it's such an anticipated um, collection. Uh, redone, uh, just a you know, th there's not been such a release, and uh, it looks like it's doing pretty well online. Oh, and wonderful. Yeah, and that's and uh, you know that is that's great. Do, do you uh, do you have you have the the rights for all your music uh, now? Is that right? 
Well, I, I'm 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 in the process of suing quite a few people because what happened in '69, uh, Diamond Records sold me. Uh, I just signed a new contract for another five years with Diamond Records. Right. And they turned around six months later. I turned down a million dollars from Columbia to sign with them. Wow. And because Diamond Records had done such a great job, uh, and it was a small label, uh, but I knew that I was the main one with Diamond. Uh, you know, I had all the hits. Johnny Thunder had one. Remember Johnny? Oh, yes. Johnny Thunder. Here we go, loop de loop. Right. Yeah. And uh, a couple other people uh, had, had small hits, but I was the only one that sold millions and millions of records. In fact, I got ripped off there, too. But they sold me for two and a half million dollars to a company in Nashville called Sertron. Wow. And I was very upset, unbeknownst to me. And I was with them for a year. Uh, we had Don Williams was, he had, he had paid Don Williams, he right. had Johnny Paycheck. He was Johnny Paycheck's manager. Wow. And he paid himself a bunch of bucks. And he, uh, Sertron had given him 15 million to open up this re label called Sertron Records. Wow. And he was he had taken a bunch of it and bought these old buildings and fixed them up and had offices in one and then had the recording studio on the other. And it's I was I'd been on the charts for almost six years and all of a sudden I can't get a record out. So I, I, I went to the he he kept recording me, he did two two live albums at the King of the Road and I only have like I found five of them, and he he, he did two albums uh, in his recording studio. But he was paying himself big dollars. Right. So I I, I found out through his secretary what was going on because I I was ready to shoot him. Right. And I found out he's the biggest crook. So I got in the plane and flew to Anaheim, California, because that's where Sertron was, and showed him the papers how he how he was stealing the money, wasn't putting any records out. Mm -hmm. Just, uh, and Clint Eastwood was on, on that label, too. Is that right? So in fact, Clint and I became pretty good friends, and he, uh, <laughs> he wanted me to do a, uh, a, song, a song for it, that he was doing a picture, and he wanted me to do the, the theme song. Oh, wow. And that was recorded it with <laughs> called No One Ever Lost More. Uh-huh. And then when, when, when I went to California and told him what was going on, and then... Of course, we all got knocked out because they came down and put him in jail and, and took all the masters with him. Oh, wow. Mm. So uh, in 72, they passed a law because I paid for all my records. I'm, every time I got royalties, I would spend it. They would spend it on recording. Right. So, so I never received one check. They passed a law because these small labels were doing it. Roulette was doing it. Diamond was doing it, and they changed the law that whoever paid for those, like, out of my royalties, they're now yours. But what happened was that company went bankrupt, and with the bankrupt, they sold all my masters to people all over the country. Oh, wow. Right. And they have them on, on iTunes and everywhere. You'll see them on, uh, on all, all, all the, if you go on there and punch up Roddy Dove, you'll see all the, that they're selling, so... I've got a lawyer now working on it to uh, to, to, to get what they have to take them off. So there's millions of dollars, and they never got paid either. That's I've never been paid one cent. So there could be a whole second collection coming out in a couple of years. You know, if you find, if you get these rights back, there could be another collection coming out. Yeah, oh eventually. yeah, yeah. That's, yes. It's I mean, you know, and it seems like that. It's such a uh, I don't know. It's such a huge part of the business back in those days where artists oh, yes. getting it, it taken like advantage a, of. and it's They took advantage of everybody. Yes. And, but, but, you know, I love Diamond Records because, you know, I'm, doing, I'm, working, every, I'm working every night, seven days a week. Sure. So mm -hmm. I didn't care what was going on with, the, with my royalties. But then, then, then they turned around and had me sign a contract and then sold me. That, that broke my heart. Right. Of course. What and a yeah. They got the money. I didn't get a penny. Hmm. So and and you you continued to um to re record throughout the seventies, doing a lot of uh, yeah, well, I, country. I, I, I signed up with um, actually it was Decca. I signed up with uh, in Nashville, and then I, I put out a couple 
uh, albums with country with uh, um, then it went to MCA right and one one album but I had a couple of hits of country charts and it's and it's and and the whole time uh you know you, you there's there's been a few times you you you've, you've uh, I mean you haven't had many breaks I, I I you know there's just a few periods but you've been performing uh, this whole time, and 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 one of the things that I I've got to say is how much of a a connection you have with your audience. It is uh, something that has never kind of gone away. I I, I think that. It, oh yeah, I've I've got the best. I used to be a Ronnie Dove fan club, but we don't have that anymore. It's the Ronnie Dove friend club. That's. <laughs> That's, I mean, it comes to every show, and I, they, they never let me down. Yeah. What, what do you? I mean, obviously you've, you know, you've been doing this years and years, and you know, what do you, what do you think uh, it, it is about? You know, there's the voice, and you've got such a warm personality, but it, that makes so many people. The, the the room fills with energy when you hit the stage. Yes, it, it, it's amazing. It, it it it. That's why I still do it because. Uh, uh, I, I love it so much, and I love my friends so much. They're there for, for every show. I mean, if I'm working, like up, I worked up in Minnesota, and I worked up in North Dakota and South Dakota, we had people fly up there. Wow. Just, and they see me all the time in, in you know around this area and in Pennsylvania and all the joints, West Virginia and all the places we work. But you know it's, it's it's winding down now, and uh, but I still love it. But, it's, uh, I'm gonna keep doing it till I can't do it anymore. Right. I mean, it's and you've you've got such an energy uh, doing it, and it and it is is just a, a pleasure to watch. And well, I, I, I found out early days, in the early days, if you get the audience involved in the show. And they feel like they're part of it, and that's what I do because there's there's something that comes up every show from from the audience that just we get a big laugh or, or something happens and right. it's pretty neat, you know. And and everybody knows everybody, you know. Everybody everybody knows each other, and and they try. And in fact, they'll bring buses to. If I'm out of state, they'll bring, they'll bring a bus to where I'm working. Wow, <laughs> that's that is incredible. That's pretty. Uh, no, that's pretty neat. Dude. Yeah, and uh, you know, and I have to ask the the uh, there's lots of great uh, footage of when you do uh, uh, one kiss for old time's sake. The 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 yeah, that, that, the ladies that's line up. A long song. Uh, because they line up and kiss me, every one of them. And it is. When it did is, that when did that tradition start? Yes. Yeah. Actually, actually, it started with a song I had called "Kiss Away." Uh-huh. Way back when I worked at the uh, King of the Road down in Nashville, uh-huh. uh, I would sing "Kiss Away," and and, and the, all the girls would start coming up and kissing me. And your wife and must then, have loved that, then, right? Uh, <laughs> then it just whenever I sang. A, Kissing song, they come up and kiss me. So, oh, nice. that is... but it's changed over to one kiss for old times' sake because a lot of people, uh, you know, they've they've had some down or something's happened, and they just want one kiss for old times' sake. That's right, true. and it's such a romantic, uh, yeah. uh, nostalgic kind of song. But you don't, too. you don't miss a beat. You sing the song, you kiss the ladies, you take the flowers. It was. <laughs> It's incredible. <laughs> like, we were like, like a true showman. I know. I mean, like, really, it was really something to see. I was it's, like, it's incredible to watch. Yeah, you didn't and, miss a beat at all. And I mean, and it just the the passion in in yeah. in your in the audience. It, it is uh, it is really a, a, just a, a it's like a, a circle of generosity between you and the with the audience, without a like, doubt. Yeah, and it's and it's such a, it's such a great uh, great thing to see. I, I, I was we're so happy that you. Uh, uh, you know, still performing, and uh, I, I just—I know we should—we need to wrap up in just a second. But I just wanted to mention, uh, everybody can check your website out at uh, www.ronniedove.com, and you have a second website. Uh, oh yeah, so that—that's, and in fact, we're we're going to enhance this one. It's called RonnieDoveMusic.com, where we've got—I think it's a hundred and uh, hundred and. 217 songs Oof. where you can listen to 30 seconds of it. Yeah. Wow. And and then you can, there's an order blank where 
you can uh, is that I think it's a dollar quarter piece for each song, and you can uh, send it to me and and we make the I have a, a guy that does all the work making all those CDs for me and and put the name of the people like say for example uh, this one is to my good friend Eddie Winters and oh. and then you pick out the songs that you want out of them. So it's a custom custom made CD directly from you. Yeah, I'm well, sorry. It's a custom made CD directly from uh, from you. Yeah, well, I I, I have a, a a friend that does, makes all the CDs for me. Sure, sure. And and we put your personal name on it. Oh, uh, that's great. And it, it's kind of neat. And uh, all the information's on there. You can you can print up a uh, a a little flyer there and pick out the songs that you want. Most people uh, buy them all. Uh, right, really that's, good. You can't beat why that. You? Yeah, yeah. I, said, I want all 217. Wow. Why waste time? You just make a box set, yeah. and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it's working out good, and uh, and I think we're, we're I'm going to turn it over to uh, uh, Tom Deal, and and we, we're going to start putting the, the DVDs on there. And that's great. A lot of collectible stuff that we have too. Ronnie, have you have, have you uh, ever talked to anybody about maybe do, doing a book, doing a, a, or a movie? I, I'm doing that. Ronnie uh, a movie. A little bit of a time. I'm 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 doing the book because uh, it's pretty exciting. There was a lot of a lot of crazy stuff went on in my life. I mean, I didn't know that the mafia was involved with the record company to begin with. Oh, oh wow! Yeah, what? see, Roulette uh, Roulette Records was. The Mafia Records. That's that is and, ironic and the with the name. That, is ironic. That, that, that had Diamond Records worked for uh, Roulette Records. Aha! Uh -huh. So that it all slipped over. So they, and then they they started booking me in all these mob clubs, mm -hmm. right? In mm -hmm. Boston and yeah. different places, and it's pretty exciting. <laughs> Gosh, I, I, can, I can't imagine. I, I, got, I got one story real quick. Sure, go for it. They booked me in New Jersey. Uh, this is like I had probably five hits in a beautiful club in Orange, Orange County, New Jersey, which is outside of New York. So they had a big orchestra, and I had my charts, and I'm, I'm in, in, in New York picking out songs, and they said, well, Ronnie, go over there, could you... They, they were going to pay you 10000 to come over there. And I said, okay. So I went over early that afternoon, and they had a great band, and they, they had, I had charge for all the show. And, and the band was wonderful, and the place was jammed that night. Well, after I got through, uh, I, I said to the guy, well, I, can I get paid now? I want to go back to New York. And he said, oh, no, we're hanging around. We're trying to get all the... Uh, stuff together we're paying low all the place is empty so then they they hand me ten thousand dollars cash because i'd already been knocked off uh with a bunch of checks where people would book me right and gave me right. phony checks <laughs> oh so geez. we have to get the cash mm -hmm. so now i've got ten thousand in a in this big envelope it was all hundred dollar bills oh my gosh <laughs> and i get ready to walk out the door and there's two Ugly looking guys, mean looking. Right. Yeah. And I just bought a brand new. This is 1965. I just bought a brand new Buick Riviera. Wow. Nice. And I'm thinking, oh my god. <laughs> so I walked out the door. They came out the door behind me. I ran to the car. I was in good shape. <laughs> yes, I bet. I jumped in my car and I took off. Right. Now I'm headed back towards New York. They jumped in their car and they're following me. Oh, oh my gosh! Right. They, they had a Pontiac, blue Pontiac, and never forget it. I I stopped at a Hess station because uh -huh. I knew they were following me. Right. I got out loud to go get gas. They pulled up at a pump right not, not too far from there. Uh huh. And I jumped back in my car. And they jumped back in theirs, and I took <laughs> off. Jeez. Now wow. I'm doing 110, 120 miles an hour. It's like three or four o'clock in the morning, and it's so on the. I went across the George Washington Bridge. Thank God they didn't have those things that came down. Oh, yes. Doing 120 miles an hour. Yeah. And I haven't seen the policeman. I have my lights flashing. And they, they didn't come across the bridge. Oh, they stayed in their territory. Or they would have robbed and killed me. So that, wow. I mean, oh, that, wow. That's safe. And then, of course, I didn't know until later that was a mafia place. Wow. 
So what they ever paid me cash so they could rob and kill me. Wow. Oh, my gosh. That is. That, oh, I've, got, I've got 20 or 30 cow. more stories about that. I, You know what? I can't wait. I, I, I would love to, to read. If you do the book, I would love that to was, read it. It sounds like a really interesting book. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just doing a little bit of time. Now, now, I knew I couldn't do the book. 10 years ago because some of the people were still alive. Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> now the good stories. Can come yes, out. now the real yeah, yeah. the real dirt. I love I it. To, I had to double check. In fact, there's a book called My Life with the Mafia. Right. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't in the book, but I should have been. Uh, but that, that was a place in Boston and they, and uh, Fats Domino, they they, 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 were, they they cheated him out of money. Wow. Oh, boy. Uh, and that's that's a that's a story of its own. Jeez. But anyway, I I, I certainly enjoyed the uh, chat with you guys. Oh, and oh that was uh, wonderful, Ronnie. I I've got to I got to say I we we thank you so much. Yeah. For taking the time out of your day to to, to speak yeah, with us a, and share these great stories. A pleasure. It is, and uh, and uh, just uh, just to let you, uh, let our audience know, uh, RonnieDove dot com, RonnieDoveMusic dot com are the websites. And uh, and we're gonna. In fact, I have that new CD uh, here, and I, I sell them myself. Yeah, and the, the complete original chart hits 1964 to 69. Uh, a fantastic collection. Uh, thank you once again for coming on the program. We we really appreciate you, uh, you, you you spending the time with us. Any time at all. Thank you guys so you, much, and I love you both. Thank you oh, so much, thanks Ronnie. So much, Ronnie. Thank you so much. Have a great one, sir. Yeah. Okay. Thank, bye bye. Wonderful. What a fantastic... What a, what a spirited individual. Just a great, I mean, fantastic yeah. story.